No, this is like voice. Are we anonymous? Yes. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> okay, first question is: Can you tell? Can you tell me how alcohol is being used by Illinois Wesleyan students? And if so, where is it happening? Mm. Mm-hmm. They drink it. You know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think socially. Is yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sometimes uh, casually too. Casually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, parties. Definitely at parties. Okay. The dorms. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I know people go to the bars that are 21. Mm-hmm. That are 21. So that's not my business. <laughs> there are a couple. <laughs> for okay. Fraternity, fraternity houses for sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's a couple houses around campus that yeah. students live at that host parties too. Okay. What are some methods of consumption? Consumption. So kegs, mixed drinks, beers. Kegs, beers. All of the above. Yeah. All yeah. The above. Mm-hmm. Any okay. type of form of alcohol is being used, uh, pretty much. Okay. Are students using um, protective factors? So alternating alcohol and non-alcoholic drinks, pacing, counting their drinks, um, and like what kind of protective factors are students using kind of thing? So I know with our friend group, we always have like there's always a sober person, okay. and then there's always someone who has water for everyone. So we always make sure everyone has water, and we always make sure that they drink. They don't drink en- enough to the point where they have alcohol poisoning. So it's always responsibly. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's happening all over. Yeah, right. Like, that's, <laughs> that's why I said our friend. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I definitely know some people who like they definitely lose track, but they'll at least like drink water when when and if they get home. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I feel like there's normally, like, not, like, an assigned person or anything. Like, definitely not as regulated as Mm -hmm. David was saying. But, like, there's typically someone who is kind of keeping a lookout. Or if they see someone who's, like, absolutely plastered, they'll, like, go help them. So it's not, like, not, like, oh, I need to alternate. But, like, oh, she's not having a good time. Let me help her kind of thing. I think it depends on who the person is that's being is like intoxicated and who is around that person because I feel like sometimes like just from observation and experience I've noticed that students of color when we see another student who's kind of like in that situation we'll try to like walk up to them and say like hey are you okay like if we know them we're not going to just like like, blatantly ignore them Um, but I think even if we don't know them we still help them like if we see somebody in need Mm-hmm. We make sure and they're I've okay. I've noticed that other students just kind of like look at them, they'll pull out their phone, and I'm just like, that's mm-hmm. not a good way to help a person who is clearly in a dangerous situation. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. It's very much like a yeah, like a, you see it happen, and it's like ooh yikes, and just keep going. Yeah. Like okay. Sure. Okay. Do you think that happens a lot, a lot yeah. more than like helping people? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why do you think that? just the clicks that are at the school mm-hmm. to be honest and just I think like it has a lot to do with it. seeing it's literally seeing it happen okay like I'll, 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 I'll I'm probably one who's done it before like so or like okay. the assumption that like oh someone else will take care of them yeah. so that they don't do it themselves yeah yeah okay just assume have you noticed a change in alcohol use on campus between your first year and now and if so, how would you describe those changes? In ourselves or in the community? In the community. So, <clears throat> one thing that I've talked about. So, I feel, I could, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like our freshman year, there's a lot more house parties around campus. So, like, like there was no house parties. It wasn't a matter of, like, if there was a party, it'd be more, like, where. Mm-hmm. And I've noticed that house parties and frat parties, because they're on probation, like, they've stopped and less house parties. So, like, I know a handful of underclassmen who are like still 18, but they have fakes to go to the bars now okay. because there's no longer house parties. So okay. they're they're like way younger people. Yeah. Like I never even thought of going to the bar because like I would when I was freshman because I would just go to house parties. But yeah. like now they're like, there's nothing on campus. Campus is dry. Like they go to the bars. Okay. I definitely agree with that. I think our freshman year, I think it's just we're all 21 now. Mm-hmm. So it's as alcohol is more accessible to us. But I definitely agree with the house party thing. We had a lot of friends who have more houses. And so alcohol was provided at the house party because they were 21 but now since not a lot of the seniors have houses or the how the party will get shut down quicker there's not that much alcohol so now more younger people have fakes to go to the bars yeah i noticed that the underclassmen have resorted to using fake ids i mean when i was a sophomore i knew plenty of kids that would just go out to the bars and and this or um 
people would jump the fence at certain bars to get into the bar. Um, so just like, I think it just, people think that this campus isn't quote unquote like a party time area. They'd rather go like to downtown Bloomington, which I think is the worst thing you can do because the cops there are like, I don't know. Okay. But it, there's been a decline in that here, I think. Okay. What about, I know you guys are sophomores, so have you seen a change between first year and now? Um, I think I've seen, at least at parties, I've seen a lot more first years who don't know how to drink and haven't, because either they haven't been out enough or they just go hard every single time mm -hmm. when it's like I've seen more like there have been some students that like I've been like okay we need like we need to get you home or like we need to do something or like just trying to like help someone you know what I mean like mm -hmm. in my freshman year there really wasn't I don't really remember doing that many of times but I also didn't go out and party much in my freshman year so I can't speak of that mm -hmm. yeah I think there's like a lot to be said about when you go to college a lot of people that I've talked to know of someone, maybe not themselves, but know of someone else who didn't drink at all before going to college, and then all of a sudden they're introduced to the party scene, whether it be to the bars or a house party, and mm -hmm. then they just don't know what's their limit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't matter about what their potential limit might be, they just kind of go until they can't go anymore, and then all of a sudden it's an issue where they're getting close to alcohol poisoning, they've blacked out, they're somewhat blacked out. Um, so I don't know, I think it's just, and also like this freshman class for me is like pretty clicky in of itself, so it's like that social pressure mm -hmm. um, that I see at parties. You know, they either bring alcohol that they have in their dorms or they, they come and they just go, go too far, so. Okay. They also seem very young to me. Like even still now, it's like some, I don't know, when I was in high school, I remember there were girls going to garage parties every single like, weekend. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, okay, whatever. But coming like here now, it's like people are like, yeah, I never went to a single, like what you said, like never went to a single party, mm -hmm. never drank and uh, chose like the big parties to just go and lose yourself, which is not always the smartest thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm the opposite of you. Like I don't really go out anymore, but at least what I've seen, yeah, the freshmen always, the ones that I think it's a lot of experimenting mm -hmm. I feel like because they don't a lot of times know exactly how much is too much yeah and also like transitioning into college and all that stuff and like the stresses of that I feel like most times I see freshmen sort of not handling alcohol in the safest way mm -hmm. totally is vaping an issue on campus? <laughs> and <laughs> what are students vaping? Yeah, everything. Yeah. Okay. Vaping is just rules, dab, dab pins, jewels, oh, all that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would be able to tell the difference if somebody oh. like helping out to me and was like... All I know is sometimes, <laughs> it's like I don't know. sometimes it doesn't matter. I know people who take a hit of a dab pen on their way to class. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're showing up with a thing high to class. Okay. Like they like, I can't get through my class without being high. I've walked out of a class in CNS, and as I was like leaving the building, I saw somebody immediately take one out and just like clouds. Yeah. I was like, wow. Oh, yeah, I've it seen happens. someone do it inside of State Farm in the classroom. I'm like, cool. yeah, there's a guy who consist shirt. consistently yeah. mm -hmm. like vape at just in the back of class, and the teacher would never say anything. Really? Yeah. I don't know if because he was oblivious or. <laughs> he just thought it was just vape, but I don't know what it was. Where come from? Weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a random puff of air, you know. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, other than alcohol, what are um, most of the commonly used drugs on campus? Mary Jane. <laughs> yeah. Most definitely. Most mm -hmm. definitely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> I've been waiting to say that. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any drugs that are on the rise? I don't know. I don't know. I've no actually, clue. talking to a lot of the freshmen, for some reason, LSD is on the rise for them. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but a lot of them has been using it, and I'm like, okay. 
I've seen a lot of like one hitters at parties. Mm -hmm. that yeah. are, like, I don't know. What, 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 what is that? I don't really know. Okay. I think it's like it's like a paint thinner or something. It's something that gives you like what? an instant high or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh okay. okay. Just like, like uh... I don't know. They keep it in like a small little bottle and they basically like, oh, you want a high of it. Oh, those are poppers. I... They're called poppers. Okay. So like it's like a little bottle, um, some kind of liquid in it, and you just you just, like snort it, and um, you get a quick high from it. Like, right. Oh yeah, one. Okay. Never seen stuff. that one. Yeah. No, never heard of that. It's like, yeah. It's not like I mean, yeah, you. It's pretty much damaging the brain. Mm -hmm. As yep. all. Yeah. Things are when you. It's like when so. people like sniff sharpies. I don't see people doing that at parties. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. About a so. sharpie. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's on the rise, but I know Coke's been around. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That one's been. I seen that my fr fresh my first party. I w I watched the mm. boy go. And I was like, you know what? It's time for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. Okay. Um, what is this Mary Jane that you were talking about? Marijuana. Weed. Yeah. Oh, Weed. Marijuana. Okay, it has a new name now. Oh, that's, 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 oh, really that's, that's old. old. You've okay. never heard that? Nope. In the 70s. Huh. That's Molly. Like, that's like Molly. Yeah, one of the Molly's been things. a big thing. Molly. Oh, I know what Molly. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard Mary. That's so. That's interesting. Marijuana, what? Mary Jane. Not even in like a song. That was the song. That's what she right. was doing. Right. I was singing that song. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, weed is pretty huge. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any any drugs that are falling in use or popularity? I think kind of the bigger drugs like MDMA. That's I haven't heard a lot of people popping that recently. Um, I don't hear anybody popping ecstasy or anything. Yeah, ecstasy isn't really a thing anymore. Okay. Was I it don't, a I don't thing think people... last year or like two years ago or was it? Mm -mm. I don't no? think so. Okay. I don't see people smoking cigarette th cigarettes that much anymore because they have the jewels now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like it's been pretty consistent. Well, yeah. Okay. Nothing, nothing on the top. How do Illinois Wesleyan students learn about the effects and impacts of different drugs? Mm -mm. Posters. <laughs> posters? In the bathroom yeah, stalls. Yeah. Okay. In like the bathroom stalls. Presentations. Stall I know they're our freshman year we had like a presentation on that. Honestly, I just feel like the take on the drug scene here, maybe whatever you want to call it. I feel like, for example, weed is one of those just politicized drugs that at this day and age has kind of become very. I mean, there's states who regulated it. I mean, California and Colorado, that's what everyone talks about. Um, and I think that there should be more of an emphasis on knowing how to responsibly consume these and you know the effects that there are but also mm -hmm. knowing that you know this is also what's good with them because i feel like a lot of times the posters that we are given are catered to a very negative thing of you know marijuana mm -hmm. and i think again this is outside my beliefs but i feel like if we want our kids to actually get educated and know what's in their dad pens what they're smoking what's in their blunts it's like you need to know also how to distinguish, like, this is what you should be smoking because mm -hmm. it's more organic, whereas maybe a dab pen contains apparently pesticides, pesticides. or other chemicals mm -hmm. that yeah. are not FDA approved. And I think this campus should be more open-minded to that and not be so harsh on that because I just feel like weed isn't, it can become a problem when students get dependent on it to relieve their stress. But at the same time, I feel like there should be some positives to, you know, if you consume an edible and what's the difference between that and you know I just feel like the education here on that isn't very positive yeah and because think... marijuana is used for medical issues mm -hmm. and the consequences that students get for marijuana are very harsh because I know we have people in our friend group who use it for their symptoms of depression mm -hmm. and people use CBD for nausea so I feel like the consequences for marijuana have always been so harsh when I feel like marijuana is one of those drugs where they don't have like a huge negative impact. Like a big impact is maybe like lung cancer if you smoke it the wrong way. But it doesn't do anything like alcohol. Like compared to alcohol, marijuana is like a lesser of the evils. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. And I also understand, like, Wesleyan not wanting to do that because they don't want to feel like they're promoting anything. Right. Mm -hmm. But in that regard, everyone gets it anyway, mm -hmm. no matter, you know, even if the campus allows it or not. They have it in their dorms. They have it. They have people who can give it to them. They have people who can cook it for them or do whatever they want for it. Mm -hmm. So I think, like, like 
again, educating is always a great idea, but I also, I also do understand that there's probably a lot of things that would inhibit you from doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, as an RA, I don't know how it would be to do a, like a pro weed program, you know, I'd be, I'd be worried about losing my job in that regard, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So again, making the conversation more open. Mm -hmm. Cause my big thing is like, I know you do it. I know you're doing it. But it's also, like, just make sure you're being smart and safe at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what we should, we should be promoting. Okay. Yeah, I don't think the program has to be, like, pro-weed. But if you do put on a program, more so, like, educate on, like, the good and the bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what you should and shouldn't do and how this affects you mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Okay. It's, like, the same thing for, <clears throat> for like, alcohol. Like, mm -hmm. we have programs, like, the, like, alcohol talks that all the freshmen go to. They literally say, like you're gonna want to drink at 18 years old mm -hmm. and just make sure that you're safe mm -hmm. like even though it's 100 percent illegal like we still talk about it as if like it's gonna happen like mm -hmm. you're gonna drink under the age of 21 and you're gonna have it in your dorms and this this and that so like be safe about it mm -hmm. so like i feel like the same thing could be applied to weed totally okay. um so we're talking about programming like the to you know the toilet talks or whatever um are there some that are effective that you think or that you think could be effective if we changed how they were approached kind of thing? Uh, I don't think so. No? Why? Because most of them are like, oh, like, this is what's going to happen to you in, like, uh, whatever many years. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> this is what you're putting in your body. And it's just like, don't smoke and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. when people see that if they smoke, they're going to immediately choose to not look at it mm -hmm. and also they're like everywhere um because we get as RAs we get too many of the same posters and we have to put them up so there's like probably 20 on each floor so mm -hmm. when you have that many people are not going to be paying attention to it anyway and mm -hmm. then even if they glance at it and see it then they're probably not going to pay attention to it okay mm -hmm. it's also kind of an outdated approach to the maybe like Maybe it worked in Nancy Reagan's era of mm -hmm. just say no, but mm -hmm. I think now it's <coughs> it shouldn't be. For example, the synthetic marijuana poster that was in my stalls, like people just tore it down because they were just like, it's too much information. And one of my residents was just like, I just feel like there's so many like positives to it that people aren't acknowledging that mm -hmm. there's also like, it helps me in this regard. Mm -hmm. And so I think that. Um, I don't know, I feel like posters, one is a waste of paper at this point, because no one's going to, like, there's some that are useful, you know, like emergency numbers and all of that, but I feel like when it comes to drugs, the formatting of it needs to be, I guess, catered more to college students and not so demeaning of, like, like Nikhil was saying, like, if you do this, you're going to die in two years. Like, that's yeah. not a good way to tell a person that what they're doing, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's college. Like, yeah. everyone makes mistakes, and just because you do it, it's not, doesn't make you a bad person, mm -hmm. but knowing how to do it needs to be at the forefront of the posters and stuff. I think if if you're trying to do programming, it has to go past passive programming because people can just, like I said, walk past it. Okay. So if you want to get people together and talk, then do that. I think that'd be more useful, like anything. Okay. You also think playing to your audience, like Cindy just said, like we are college students, so we're most likely on our phones. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how that might be shaped or like text alerts or something like that where mm -hmm. you kind of like sign up for something um your RA gets you in a group chat that's like more geared to like the drugs and alcohol so like even if I know a lot I had a hard time personally getting people to like physically come to my events mm -hmm. so if they're not there or they have some sort of excuse um then it's still getting that information to them um because they're bound to at least know that they have that notification mm -hmm. on their phone because they're always on it so okay what was the original question <laughs> <laughs> um so like if we well the, well like how do illinois wetland students learn about the effects and impacts of different drugs kind of thing I, and i went on to talk about like different programming that's effective yeah i think going back like to the original question i think the most how people learn about it is by doing Mm -hmm. And that's where they learn the most. And trial and error. And, yeah, basically. Okay. And from people who have done it before and upperclassmen and all that. Like, that's where I think they get the most of their information and that's where they learn the most. You know what I mean? Mm hmm Okay. 
where do students have access to the drugs? So from home, campus, off campus? Everywhere. Oh, everywhere. everywhere. There's mm -hmm. on campus, off campus, all the way off campus, all the way at home. People would bring them from home. It, it's everywhere. <clears throat> it's on high demand. So if you want it, you're going to find it. Yeah. It's, it's not preventable. Like, mm -hmm. you can't tell anybody no, because they're going to be like, no, okay, you, yes, all right. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah. You could ask, like, you can pick it, any two people and ask them where they could find, like, if, like, for example, if I wanted to find some beat, I could ask, <laughs> I could pick any two people on campus, ask them, and they go, oh, yeah, I know a friend, at least one of them, probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's usually upperclassmen who live mm -hmm. off campus. Mm -hmm. Okay. I could probably find seven right now. Yeah, not seven, but maybe like a handful of people. Okay. And I, it also is like I guess I don't know how Wesleyan would describe or differentiate themselves from ISU because I, I mean every student can differentiate IWU from ISU, but because ISU and so ISU is in such close proximity to Wesleyan, yeah, it's like bound to happen because ISU is such a bigger school. Mm -hmm. And not to say that ISU is like they're all a bunch of crackheads, but I'm saying that like <laughs> ISU has a you know the scene there is even higher than it is here just mm -hmm. number wise so I think um, a lot of kids who've made connections with kids from ISU can also tell you like yeah if you don't want to get it around here then you can go by ISU and get it there because okay. I guess ISU isn't as concentrated as it is here and I think that's more because like they're they don't require you to stay on campus for three years so as a sophomore you have your own apartment mm -hmm. if you want to sell weed out your apartment you're good so it's yeah. easier for it it's per se easier for them to sell it or obtain it. And then once you make the connection, that's, you're a sophomore right there already knowing about someone who sells weed. Mm -hmm. So it's just easier. Mm -hmm. um, when students abstain, what kind of activities are they involved in? Kind of the same things, like what do you mean? Like, like people who don't drink are, are like straight edge or just like people yeah who don't so if it. so if you so people so for people that don't drink or don't do drugs what are they doing dd <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> driving okay. i mean i, I know I have, I have friends who either don't they choose not to drink just because or they can't drink because of like medical reasons but they still go out and still like mm -hmm. go to parties right. they okay. dance with their friends mm -hmm. you know but like and if and because they can drive they will go to get food afterwards mm -hmm. if someone doesn't want to go out they'll stay in their dorms and watch movies yeah. or something. Okay. At least from what I've seen, like if you do go out and you don't drink, like I don't I've never seen anyone be pressured. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I think they still without drinking or smoking or anything, they still do the same activities as if mm -hmm. the person who just drank or smoked. Like it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. only thing that changes is the influence. I will say, though, that some students, and I include myself sometimes, like, when you go to some of the on-campus, I remember my sophomore year, I was just kind of like, I can't do the sober. Like, it was yeah. just... Yeah. Mm. yeah. I'm like, at this point, I'm not even here because it's fun. I'm here because, you know, my friends are here. They're all drunk. At that point, I was just over it. But I think, like, as you get older and, like, mature, I feel like at this point, I'm just like, I don't need to have alcohol to have a good time. You know, you can mm -hmm. play spades and get in people's faces and be, you know, have a good time without drinking. I know mm -hmm. some people, even in those social settings, would maybe have, like, a glass of wine or a bottle, or, like, not a bottle, but, like, a cup of champagne, but it's mm -hmm. not, like, I need this to yeah. be loose. It's more of, like, a casual, very, you know, again, with maturity comes more knowledge of you don't need to take three shots of tequila to feel great. To just enjoy your time. Yeah. yeah. You'll be okay. Okay. Um, are there any additional activities you think the university should provide? That those, for those who are abstaining? Mm -hmm. Intramural sports needs to be a bigger thing on campus. I just feel like sports in general are a good way for kids to kind of, not to stay off the streets because like this is going to normal, <laughs> but I think like for kids to kind of have something to do, you know, mm -hmm. after they're done with classes or on the weekends, because I feel like they organize it here, but I feel like sometimes students still don't, Either they don't take advantage of it or mm -hmm. certain groups of students, so like the frats and sororities will take over and it's kind of annoying now because I'm just like, oh my god, like this kid's a sick, so of course he's going to get all his 10 foot players. But, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of making students more active of what there is on campus and being mm -hmm. more proactive about it. So if there is a club sport, try to like promote it and allocate more funds for that. You know, club soccer teams, club volleyball teams, I know like U of I has those kind of things for students who 
may not or cannot be D1 athletes, but want to still continue being competitive. Mm -hmm. You know, some, I don't know, that's just me, from my yeah. perspective. I, I think Wesleyan does a good job with like doing after school activities, well, after school, but like after hours activities. Like we do skating, mm -hmm. we do a lot of stuff. It's just the retention of keeping students to come to them. Because I know our friend group, we always go to every activity you guys mm -hmm. plan because you guys do a good job with planning the mm -hmm. events. I just think, I guess maybe promotion, maybe. I don't mm -hmm. know. I think I think you guys do good jobs with the uh, activities for people who don't drink. So, and I don't think the people who don't drink are the only people who show up. Right. I think mm -hmm. the yeah. people who do are there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is like going back to you don't need to be out and not do anything, but you also don't need to be inside mm -hmm. and not do anything. Yeah. Because both groups are gonna be interacting. Mm -hmm. I, I guess just, maybe. Oh, go ahead. No, okay, I talked about it. <laughs> I think it just that just goes along with the consistency factor. Yeah. It's like I know there are like some, we'll say, um, months that are dry because there are no events at Hence, there are no events at CNS, there are no events at wherever they may be. Um, and so people are bored on a Friday, Saturday night that don't drink or do drink um, and there's nothing to do and they just want to, you know, dance off some stress or something. Mm -hmm. and so, like, I think that also goes with funding, with like helping ourselves with funding so that they can host more consistently um, or co host. So, okay. I agree with that. I also feel like allocating stuff for outside of the, the campus, I feel mm -hmm. like there's so many people who their senior year were like, I didn't even know this was in Bloomington normal. Like, mm -hmm. that's just crazy to me. Like, there's so many things to do outside of campus, and I feel like if the school even had events where we're off campus, like the trampoline park where mm -hmm. you would play maybe like 10 bucks and mm -hmm. you know, get like a hot dog and a drink or yeah if you went to like the bowling alley mm -hmm. um maybe even in conjunction with isu that would be even a, a even bigger event where mm -hmm. you know just they things have their that, own bowling alley yeah they do i know but i'm saying that like if they work yeah. together no that's what i'm saying if we do it together yeah. we can use their yeah. bowling alley mm -hmm. instead of paying that right. bowling alley mm -hmm. to use theirs yeah just things that could get kids also mobile so they're not constrained to the room because yeah. you know sometimes they need a fresher breath air and mm -hmm. And then that teaches us how to use the bus because we get the bus for free anyway. Yeah, so now do. that's more students using the bus and learning about the bus system. Mm -hmm. So that's another factor. I think also, like, and, and it would always be helpful. Like, I am, like, just thinking of, like, the places I have gone on, like, the campus events I have gone, and there's only one I can remember that they actually did serve alcohol to students who were over 21 and that was the UD yeah. Gallatin mm -hmm. and students love that and students like I had never seen really go to anything else like came out and like it's not that they were going to like pregame or get drunk but they mm -hmm. were like the option was here and I was interested and like it got them like to dress up and come out like again I think that also was like it shows it shows that Wesleyan's also like not trying to like don't drink don't do anything don't you know what I mean mm -hmm. like it's like Here's the option. If you would like to, it's here. If not, you know, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. As long as you're legal, you know, it's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, that was the last question, but does anyone have any other last thoughts on any other questions I asked? I think, and I don't know if this is 100% true, but there have been things that I have been told since I was a freshman here about, like, certain place on campus don't have your cup mm -hmm. don't leave your cup alone mm -hmm. don't have a cup without a lid you know if you're gonna bring something to that party it better be in your own bottle and you better keep that on you like 24 7 because there is again I haven't experienced it personally I've only heard second hand and third hands but I think there's a real problem with date rape on this campus campus and I feel like we're not talking about it and it sounds like people have reported things but they've also said it's gone nowhere. That's like, the sad thing that I've heard that like reports about that stuff really haven't gotten through all the way. Mm -hmm. Even even reports <clears throat> that have like names and addresses, like this exact person mm -hmm. was the person who did this. Mm -hmm. They don't see consequences. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it's more of like I feel like it's a slap on the wrist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. The most house I've been told about were fraternity houses on campus yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. um, and again I have no solid proof or evidence but I also know I probably will never party at those places because I'm just too afraid mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Is it all of them? No. 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 It's not helpful. And like, and this is her story I heard like once from a friend, so you know, it might have just been a one time thing, but like, I knew someone. She was having an issue with a guy and she reported it. And the person who kind of like listened about it, who was in charge of like taking care of it, she was like, oh no, he's a great guy. He would never do that. So like, I don't know. I mean, like, like that's like second, third hand kind of situation. So like, could it be, could it be not true? I don't know. It's the only time I've ever heard of that. But like, I don't know. Could that be like linked to what they were saying about how it doesn't really get taken care of? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there have been times where it's like, I feel like I would like to talk to someone or like if there is an issue, but I'm scared that it'll make the problem worse because it's not handled correctly in terms of like sexual assault and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Um, And just instances where I've not felt the most comfortable, but I've been afraid of making it worse because they won't be reprimanded. And then now that person is upset or angry that because they knew that I said something to someone. Mm-hmm. But then that person didn't do enough, so that just made it worse. So, yeah, in that respect, I don't feel like it's totally, like, working. Yeah. Like they're following through. I think they're very selective in when they want to reprimand someone harshly and when they don't. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest issue because I feel like in the past, there's been individuals who have said, you know, this really actually, like, messed me up in the head Mm -hmm. and they still don't care because this person was either like a star athlete or a good kid or just a person that you know was very like regarded highly by people on this Mm -hmm. campus and I think because I was so small like the word would get out just like people talk like it's gonna Mm -hmm. get out and people are nosy and want the tea so of course they're gonna want to probe and ask Mm -hmm. questions and I think I just feel like I thinks that certain individuals shouldn't be penalized because there's people at stake and I think that's not a good way you should handle it. I don't care if you're in a financial recession, my tuition is going up regardless, and you know, mm-hmm. this person should still be reprimanded. I'm not paying thousands of dollars for you not to put people in a situation where there's consequences. And I mm-hmm. think the selectiveness also has a lot to do with, um, not selective is selectiveness with the discipline, but I think there's been actions on campus that people have either blown out of proportion that make every incident really bad. So for example, I remember at one of the frat houses our freshman year, I think they didn't let us in. I don't know if you were there because... We're not gonna talk about that. Finish we were So I was just like, oh, okay, deuces. Like, I don't even like y'all anyway, y'all. Okay, deuces. Mm-hmm. But I think like, for example, that incident, like I could have reported it. However, mm-hmm. I think now because of the growing, like the incoming freshmen, freshmen who do report instances of, for example, like racial incidents, like may not have the, may not fully account or take into consideration that maybe there was something that they misinterpreted or Mm -hmm. maybe it doesn't equate necessarily to it being a racial issue, but more of just an issue of like, this person was just a shitty person. Yeah. And you know, you were at fault, but that doesn't mean that this couldn't have happened to anyone. And I think Mm -hmm. um, there needs to be more, I guess like, they need to reprimand people when it's necessary. And if there is a complaint, it needs to be like looked at seriously because Mm -hmm. I feel like even if it is like, a lie it can still stem from something that you know and I think that um, it's just a lot of frustration for people who have been here for you know we're about to be seniors and issues that happened our freshman year were never looked at but now all of a sudden that you know this particular person is on campus it's oh well now this is a big deal and it's mm-hmm. like that's not how it should be it should have been consistent from the get-go not just because this selective person was either the blame or putting in the complaint mm-hmm. so. I think like being transparent in everything that they're doing. Like again, I've heard stories from friends where I'd be talking to certain people and I would feel like safe and comfortable, but you know, friends would grab me and say, you don't want to talk to this person. Just get away, get out, you know. That's because it's not going to end well. Mm -hmm. And then I I still see those people then around campus with people and it makes me nervous, but also I know what can I do you mm-hmm. know what I mean because it's not I also don't feel like something has to happen to it doesn't have to all like go to sexual assault for someone to do something it could be sexual harassment mm-hmm. the amount of times I've been sexually harassed on this campus is too many honestly mm-hmm. and it's ridiculous but again you know 
just because some guy says something really, really sexist or rude to me, what am I going to do? Go report him? But also, is that what I should do? Because, you know, there's never been really that conversation I feel like I've mm-hmm. had at IWU of, like, you know, we've heard, like, this is the worst case scenario, so if this happens, this is what you should do, but what if the guy does this to you? What do you do then? Mm-hmm. Just avoid him? Mm-hmm. You know, because if he's saying that in public, what is he doing in private? Yeah. And then the cause of no repar- reparations causes people not to speak up on mm-hmm. sexual harassment and sexual assault. So then that that's goes to how many people are being sexually harassed and sexually assaulted and not reporting it. Mm-hmm. So now you have all of these unreport, excuse me, unreported ones, and that that's an issue as well. What do you want to see as a as a punishment or a reprimand? I just want someone to take something seriously. <laughs> get kicked out. That's something super serious. Yeah, People yeah. go to jail for that every day. Mm-hmm. There should not be a second chance on sexual sexual assault. There should not be a second second mm-hmm. chance. Sexual harassment, there should be like a consequence of maybe like you're on probation, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't go anywhere. A sexual assault, you need to be kicked out. That's a serious offense. You go to jail. You serve jail time for that. So you need to be kicked out and... Maybe you should go to jail. No, you should go to jail. You definitely should go to jail. <laughs> and I think, yeah, I mean, like, I think, like, the, the university you might see about see us as kids, but, like, over 18. Like, You're these adult are adults. Mm-hmm. These are straight-up adults. Right. Like, you have pain. common sense. Yeah. yeah. They know, like, I'm sorry if you never got taught that law, but. Mm-hmm. You got common sense. That's common sense. So, <laughs> I think also, I think Wesleyan may be afraid that, you know, if we do take all of these things seriously, it's going to look, well, it's going to look bad on our reputation, but honestly, it's going to look better because it's showing that you don't take that crap. Exactly. You don't let, you're not going to let that happen on your campus because if you do ha- let that happen on your campus, goodbye to your full ride, goodbye to your, you know, college dreams, goodbye with your next chance, your next college. Mm-hmm. Like, people will hmm. take it, I think men on this campus or women, whoever would do it, would take it more seriously if there were genuine consequences. You know, what I've been mostly talked about is, like, the... Um, um, the one where the, the where they have to avoid you at all mm-hmm. costs. No contact. That, the no contact thing. That's like the worst I've heard, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think in men it's difficult. It's so hard. it's so small and like I know there's <laughs> certain rules about it where like it can also affect you and what you want to do because it works both ways. So even though you're the one that felt unsafe, now you can't like go do this because that person is yeah, like if you're in the same class or if you live in the same dorm, like, or like even you have to, stuff. or yeah, even that stuff. It's like you have to, you have to live your life, and no one should stop you from doing that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you're still gonna see this person. Also, sense. who's who checks up on that? It, you you have to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I at least know as an RA, I. I don't think we're allowed to know if anyone has a no contact. So, like, yes. if we see someone comes into the building, we don't, you yes. know, we don't know. Because we don't know if anyone's banned from any buildings, mm-hmm. is what I've been told. Yeah. That seems counteractive, though. You guys are, like, RAs are, like, the aides. The, like, you're supposed to, like, be keeping your residents safe. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it should be something that you know. Like, I mean, obviously, it should be kept confidential. But, like, you should know if yeah. somebody on your floor has a no contact with somebody else you should be given their picture and like no hey if i see that person wandering around these halls mm, they shouldn't be here mm-hmm. i should call somebody and that's what my thought is but also it's i've been told it's the confidentiality thing but i also feel like we've been told a lot of confidential information already mm-hmm. that i think if it last could... year um that happened where the RAs got notified about a person who was banned from specifically the hall mm. um but that's the only time that I've heard of that. And also, back to the sexual assault thing, I think that sexual harassment should be um, worried about equally because that could lead to, like, stalking and mm-hmm. stuff like that, mm-hmm. which I think isn't talked about as much on this campus either. I think also just the way we're taught about consent. Like, no offense to Darcy. I hate the posters. But- I just, yeah. I just don't understand why there can't be an update or a refreshing way of teaching it because I'm not even going to lie. When we have, like for training, it's winter training and then we have it for athletics. I hate sitting it's so and listening to her go on and on about, well, sometimes, you know, you didn't have, you know, if your drink was not, mm-hmm. I just feel like 
I love the kid, but I just feel like sometimes we need somebody who can be more forceful on it uh, about it you know mm -hmm. like i just feel like it's very passive on mm -hmm. this campus like mm -hmm. you know consent is saying yes and if you're <laughs> in halfway and they say no that's rape and i'm just like no like mm -hmm. you need to be more like forceful about it because at this point first of all i'm not listening to you i'm dro dozing <laughs> up and that sucks if somebody else in there is like rapey or stalkery or any of the things about i just feel like there needs to be a better way in which we're presented this i know Greek life has to go through the training. I know athletics, RAs, like, mm -hmm. yeah, just, we're we're required to go to training, but there's really no repercussion, like not a big repercussion if you don't go. It's like you get Greek Greek points taken away, or yeah, you yeah. get Greek, yeah, Greek, yeah. Greek, Greek, and it doesn't do it. No, you know, yeah. So Greek, like, weak points. Like I think I think I'm pretty sure the sororities take it seriously when we go, and we're like, yeah. So that's those are the signs, 100. percent But then like when the, the fraternities the are required, the girls are the ones who's are who's affected. The exactly, men are not. like. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are gender neutrality, but, but but I just think it just it needs to be more forceful. Like it needs to be like this is what consent is, mm -hmm. and if these are the consequences. Like Anna was saying, like it needs to be more forceful on the students. Like I don't care if you sit in there scared. You need to be scared because this is an issue. Like people go to jail. I mm -hmm. mean, obviously, currently in our society, there's been a lot of issues with that. But mm -hmm. like you're gonna go to jail if you do anything along the lines of making another student feel uncomfortable in mm -hmm. their sexuality and who they are and how they dress. Like just. It just blows my mind how like liberal this campus can be to some issues, but not to all issues. And I just feel like there needs to be more, just harsher way of addressing it. Cause I hate sitting through the lecture. I really don't. Yeah, I, do, I get nothing. Like there's not. And then she, and it doesn't change. So we sit through the same three sessions three years in a row now. Mm -hmm. It's yep. the same thing, passive. And at this point I'm like, you're not teaching me anything new. Mm -hmm. Teach me something new. Make me want to learn about this. Make them uncomfortable. You're not making me uncomfortable at all. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there would be more reports if yes, there yes. were yeah. more reprimands? Because yes. yes. it's more encouragement. You feel supported by the person who's like, this is what I will do. And it's like, okay, she'll do it. I trust her. I'm going to go to her and tell her. Mm -hmm. This person did this, this, and that. Whereas if you're just there, like, this is what consent is, I'm going to be like, well, now I feel like she's blaming me, and I don't really mm -hmm. want to talk to her. And mm -hmm. it's just like, especially for freshmen, like, that's tough. Mm -hmm. That's really tough. And yeah. I think also like, afterwards, having being assured that they will keep you safe as well. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times, like it's not that you feel like nothing will happen, but it's nothing will happen, and then the person knows that you said something. Mm -hmm. And no one's doing anything to protect you from what they do. Mm -hmm. Well...